Manchester, please. <laughs> right, um, yes, uh, Beverly Keenan from Manchester Left Unity. Um, yes, yeah, uh, I want to put this motion which has the title Zero Hours Contracts um, uh, and just explain a little bit about the context of how we put this together. We actually put this together before the founding conference and it was put as part of the campaigning section of um, that for that conference but it fell off the agenda. Um, I want to say that basically I'd like to support the motion because it, uh, stands in the, it stands very firmly within the economics policy that we just voted for. Um, it's based on the idea that we want to have um, an organisation, the left unity should be working for a democratic society um, which is in the hands of the workplaces and the communities. Um, and that this whole issue of zero hours contracts. Um, right, I just want to talk about how it came about, right, to, to make it clear what I'm on about, right? Um, how did it come about? What happened was um, people come along to our branch meetings, and one particular person that came along uh, brought along the issues of the fact that she was being sanctioned. Um, she was claiming JSA and then she was being sanctioned. What she actually decided to do in the face of that was to actually um, stop claiming benefit altogether. And in relation to that, she came to Left Unity to see what Left Unity were doing about that issue. Um, of course, there were other people in the Left Unity branch meeting. There were people there who were campaigning about the bedroom tax. The people there that are still campaigning about that now, around ATOS, around all the issues to do with the attacks and the marginalisation of what we were then calling the precarious section of the workforce. Uh, the whole idea of precariality, how, how can we address this? I think that already we've moved on a lot from that. We're now talking about a situation where zero hours contracts, being precarious, it's affecting a much broader section of the workforce and it's actually you know, eating into and threatening attacks um, on the people who are in work. You know, the attacks on um, the anti-trade union law attacks, those kind of attacks. So um, I think it's a very broad issue. I think um, that if you read the motion, you can see um, the impact that it has on individual people in terms of, you know, like the people who are most targeted by this... 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Right, okay, so I've said that about the precarity. Um, and, and I also think the other point about it that I want to make is that basically, for me, the reason I put this motion and was so keen on it is that I think that you know, left unity is about having clever, articulate arguments um, that the media will be impressed by. Of course, it's about that. But I also think that you know, we're not going to change people's um, views and opinions overnight. We also need to build within our communities. And um, that's why I think that this is an important motion um, to get people behind. Thank you, Comrade. Yes, Comrade, we are we're, we're, we're kind of out of time for a lot of stuff now, and things are going to start falling off the end of the agenda. Can I please ask the movers of the, 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 the subsequent motions if they'd be prepared to move formally so we can get more, more debate in from the floor? So can I ask if Bristol will be prepared to move formally? Yes. Yes. Will Birmingham be prepared to move formally? Yes, thank you, comrade. Will Leicester be prepared to move formally on Atos? Someone from Leicester? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the, Glasgow amendment to Leicester. The, the Glasgow Amendment to Leicester. Are you prepared to move formally? Was that yes? Yes. Good. And we've got the Wandsworth motion on uh, destitution. I'm going to say yes. Is that a yes? Uh, I want to yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, Okay, I'll try to give priority to people from those locations and branches, but bear in mind I don't know people. Okay, indication of who wants to speak, please. Michelin, go first. Uh, 
Um, right, I'm not very good if you can tell at doing this in two minutes, but there we are. Um, this was not a very well worded motion, I apologise for that. I want to explain that it's about a change in the way the legislation and the law, um, it's changing the law and the way it's applied has happened in the last 10 years or so to people who receive benefits of one sort or another where it was, in most of my lifetime, you would never be left with nothing. You might be left with the lowest level of things while they reassessed, while they did this, that and the other. You would never be left with nothing. And this is a big change that's happened, is that people's entire income can be switched off overnight without even warning them. And uh, by the time you've found out, you're already in debt, you've got threat of eviction, it's, uh, you can get no crisis loans anymore, you can't get legal aid to fight your case, even if you are in the right and they're in the wrong, you can still be left for up to a year with nothing. And I've seen it happen to my own relatives, it happened to me. And I can't see anybody else campaigning about this as a direct issue. And I do think it's winnable because it used to be the way things were until very recently. And uh, I don't think people are aware of the way that it's been creeping um, erosion of what we mean by security. And I think we need to start to talk about the fact that we never know, we cannot judge, we cannot, okay, we can't accept the deserving and undeserving poor because we never know why people are in the situation they're in. We should never judge. It should just be unconditional. And I'd like to see us campaigning for it as left unity, because it's a direct issue that's, that's actually killing people. Okay, thank you. Can I ask the speaker, people wanting to speak from those areas that were kind enough to move formally, stand up when they put their hands up? Dave Kellaway, Hackney Left Unity, and uh, also a member of People's Assembly. I just want to speak in favour of the Bristol um, motion and the importance of that, and also against the motion from uh, Southwark on the 24 hour week. Because I think the two motions sum up the real debate inside Left Unity. And it's a debate we have to have, like the support we have now in the conference, which is where we, orient, uh, where we orientate to, where are our main forces, where we want to build. And I think the motion for Bristol encapsulates that very well because it talks about Owen Jones's agenda for change, it talks about people's assembly, it talks about affiliating to those movements and being really involved in them because that's I think the way we will build left unity. Unfortunately with the Southern uh, motion which talks about 21 hour a week I think that doesn't really engage with where we're at at the moment in the class struggle today in this country. It seems to me that Nowhere in Europe, as far as I know, or anywhere else in the world, is anybody campaigning for 21 hour a week. It just seems to be a big step too far. We've just passed a very good economic report, which I think is excellent. It, it relates to where we are at the moment in this country, in terms of the struggles. If we go along and start getting involved in 21 hour campaigns, it will isolate us. Because they're talking the motion about having a, a committee set up to sort of look into it. I think that's the version of our energy. Our energy should be turned towards people's assembly, turned towards the anti-cuts campaigns, turned towards trade unions, turned to real, uh, and, and to raise demands in those struggles, as the Norwich comrades said, uh, uh, that are transitional, that relate to the actual existing situation, that push people further forward, but not too far forward. I think the problem with the subject motion is it goes too far forward and leaves us, if you like, uh, less credible. We need to be credible. We have a fantastic opportunity in left units at the moment. I can't believe how much positive national publicity we have at the moment. The fact that 200 members are joining in one day, that's incredible. We've got a fantastic opportunity. But we could blow this if we start marginalising ourselves, having too narrow a policy, too extreme a policy. So I, I, comrades, I want you to support the uh, Bristol motion and oppose the Southern motion. What we do now is because we are we've, we've, we're pushing time that we take the 15 minute break now and the rest of the speakers following the break. Okay?
Okay, uh, Melanie Griffiths from Huddersfield Left Unity. I'd just like to speak against the motion, motion four on the 21 hour week. Not because I oppose a 21 hour week, but because we've, we've just voted for um, campaign, getting a 35 hour week. Now surely it would be better to be campaigning for that first. I mean, I was on the teachers demonstration on, on Wednesday, some teachers work 60 hours, you know, let's, let's just be realistic, let's go for the 35 hour week first and then later on we can go back to this. Um, the other thing is, I'd like to speak <laughs> against, although I do agree with lots of things in it, is number seven, um, the Norwich one. Um, there's loads of good things in it, but I really feel it needs more work. Um, it's a conglomeration of lots of different demands. Um, I'm unclear about the, the £200, I presume that means per week, but I'd really like to see that costed. I don't think it would be seen as realistic by people at the moment. And also, who would pay for that? What level of income would that give to people? you know, in relation to the people who are actually in work. You know, I am for higher benefits, I'm also for a higher minimum wage, but I do think that this motion should go back and be, it, we should have more of a look at it because it isn't really uh, realistic yet and it is totally uncosted. We're only going to be able to take maybe three speakers. Okay. Three, that's it, these oh, three. Yeah. That's it. One, two, three. That's it. Well, you can't. One, two, three. Mike McNair, Oxford uh, Left Unity. I want to speak for uh, Mike McNair, Oxford Left Unity. I want to speak for the 21-hour week motion. Uh, this is not, as I understand it, proposing that uh, our immediate present demand should be 21 hours but that we should embark on exploration and developing a campaign for 21 hours. And the underlying reason behind it is because, uh, as I understand this, not, it's not out of my motion, but the underlying case for this sort of motion is that uh, the uh, economics points in the direction of very much more radical reduction in hours uh, is posed by the level of productivity in the uh, uh, in, in work, and in fact, the result of that is precisely the questions of precarity, zero hours, part, growth of part-time work, which is coming up in capitalism as it is, and which the Manchester motion addresses. So we shouldn't reject that on the grounds that it's not immediately feasible. We should uh, 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 enter into exploration. Secondly, on uh, Wandsworth, can we have this remitted, please? Because it's a great principle, but as drafted, it's saying it'll be a criminal offence for some poor sod in the benefits office to make a mistake as a result of which somebody's benefits are cut off. And it'll be the poor sod in the benefits office who gets prosecuted if we get legislation to say it's a criminal offence to leave someone destitute, and not the guys at the top. Hello comments, Ben Lewis, Commons Platform and Commons Party Great Britain. Um, I would like to propose that motion six from Bristol uh, be taken in, in two parts and I'll explain why. Uh, firstly, the part on uh, affiliating to the People's Assembly is obviously uh, a very good thing. Uh, the more united action we can have in the movement, the better. And in that regard, it's uh, uh, slightly regrettable that the motion on the United Anti-Cuts campaign number three was withdrawn uh, earlier on. But I do object to uh, Owen Jones's framework in his agenda for change. It bears all the hallmarks of the standard uh, Labour left, official communist movement in the past, of the idea of a, a British road, a British break with the international uh, capitalist order. In fact, if I'd been able to speak on the Economics Policy Commission document earlier, I would have actually made uh, uh, the same point. The framework is, is an illusion, the idea that Britain by itself can break with uh, the dominant policies of the international capitalist order. We need actually a far more uh, international uh, uh, approach and need to actually raise the question that, this, that our change will not occur within the existing uh, US-led uh, uh, global order. Not least because this order sets out very uh, clearly and very restrictive conditions uh, uh, on actually what governments can do in the remit of their own uh, nation states uh, and beyond. We need a, a European, a pan-European uh, approach uh, and, and, and a global approach. Uh, and not least given Britain's, uh, uh, the British economy's over-reliance on 
financial services of an international nature, we need to actually break with this uh, uh, tried and failed method, I think, of a British road uh, uh, to socialism. So in, in that sense, uh, I would, I would, oppose, uh, I would propose that we uh, oppose the second part of, of Motion 6, but obviously vote for um, the, the first bit about uh, affiliating to the, the People's Assembly and taking it part. Thank you, Congress. Yeah. Congress, just before you start, I'm sorry, this will have to be the last speaker. Oh, sorry. Um, just before this conference starts, it's going to have to be the last speaker, I'm afraid. Uh, Fred Leplat from Barnet Left Unity and also uh, a member of the National Steering Committee of the People's Assembly. And I'm speaking on that part of the motion uh, because what we need to discuss as well, what we need to think about when we go back to our branches, is what sort of anti austerity movement do we need and where should Left Unity be? At a local level, we need strong anti cuts campaigns, campaigning to defend council, health, education services, campaigns which are rooted in the communities and in the workplaces and which Left Unity is entirely part of. But we also need a national focus. And these local campaigns need to relate to a national campaign which is able to organise national initiative. We, can't, we can win some small victories at a local level, but the big victory is going to be achieved by national campaigns of action, uh, including support from the trade unions in there in, and supporting trade unions in their national action, like the teachers. That's why the People's Assembly is actually extremely important. That's why Left Unity should be in there. It is not a franchise of a single party like Unite the Resistance. It actually is a broad-based organisation which includes the Communist Party, the Green Party, some Labour MPs, Unite the PCS and the NUT. We can have some reservations about exactly how it functions, but this is the most authoritative framework and the most democratic uh, organisation that exists, which has been able to uh, call some uh, major initiatives such as the People's Assembly last year with four and a half thousand people at it. And incidentally, we had Ken speak, uh, basically arguing left duty positions at uh, one of these sessions with, where there was 800 people or so. Uh, and uh, we will be, the People's Assembly, backed by the NUT and UNITE, is also calling for a national demonstration on the 21st of June. And there are leaflets here for this demonstration and for this festival. And if the People's Assembly had not called for that, we would have it absolutely nothing until the autumn when the TUC, and it is quite welcome, the TUC is calling this demonstration on the 18th of October. But let's back the, uh, the affiliation and participation of Left Unity into the People's Assembly, and let's organize with others a national united movement against austerity. Uh, right, a couple of things to sort out and clarify for people before we go to the votes on the issues. Just a couple of things to sort out before we move directly to the votes, and that is what's just been proposed is that, in effect, the Bristol Left Unity uh, Resolution Number 6 be taken in part. And it was, as I understand it, a motion to which an amendment was accepted but now people want to not accept the amendment. Is that more or less how it works? Very much, yeah. But so, the other way around, if the accepted amendment doesn't want to come in with the first <laughs> Yeah, it, it, okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to propose that we take that in part, if that's agreed. Oh, well... It has, it has been moved. Okay, there's a point of order. Chair, I'm sympathetic. I've been, we've all been in the situation where you like one part of the resolution and you don't like another part. Once we, the resolution has been made, the amendment was accepted, once we go down the road of splitting up resolutions, it won't stop with this one. Um, it will go on and on and on because I'm going to start picking out little bits and other people start picking out bits. Uh, I'm afraid we just have to make the best of it and uh, vote for or against. My personal view, if the less people interrupt from the floor, the faster we'll get on with stuff and get to the vote. My personal view is I, I agree with that point. Whether I agree or not, it's still it's been put as a point of order, so it'll have to be voted on. All those in favour of taking the Bristol Left Unity Resolution as a whole, rather than in two parts, please show. 
All those against? That's carry on. Yeah. Um, right, so the first vote then will be on motion two from the class struggle platform. If that is then carried, that will amend the Economic Policy Commission report, which will become the substantive motion to which the any amendments that are on apply. Can I also clarify uh, for comrades, the class struggle motion covers a very large number of topics, as you would notice, homophobia, racism and a whole number of things. If in a subsequent debate later in the day, specific debates pass particular policy, that will be taken as an amendment, if you like, to this broad class struggle position, okay? So, but yeah, anyway, so we'll see what we Nick? I'm, I'm terribly sorry to do this a, a third time, but... Come on, mate! <laughs> no, point, point taken, but... We've already voted on a resolution which can't surely be amended by a subsequent vote on a different resolution. I'm going to ask someone from Standing Orders to clarify. If you look at the Standing Orders report, we made it very clear that uh, for example, the, the economic policy document has a section on Europe, which, which, which assumes continued membership of Europe. Clearly, if in our specific debate later in the day, we decide to withdraw, call for withdrawal from the European Union, that will be taken as an amendment to the economic document, obviously, because it, yeah, there's no point having a specific debate on Europe. Where motions cover lots and lots of different subjects, we thought this was the best way through the, the brass. So what happens is, you know, let's take a vote, I suggest we take a vote on a class struggle amendment, a class struggle motion, and see what happens after that. Uh, uh, because clearly, they have, they, the class struggle amendment has, has issues which cover the entire agenda of the day's conference. And we, let's see if it passes first, and then we'll discuss it after. Point of order. Can you be quick on race? Um, right. Um, Jeff Halliday, left unit in Huddersfield. Um, I might be wrong here, but I think before we were called to speak in favour of these motions, I don't think that we've been invited to speak against them. I know we've heard voices against them. I've got something that I want to point out about the class struggle motion. Um, and and I've, I don't think I've been given the opportunity to do that. I don't think I've been invited to do that. Because um, I would have. Because I think, my understanding, as far as I could hear it before, we've had people invited to talk in favour of these motions. We've not had anyone invited to talk again. Generally speaking. Can I? I, I the, the wording that I heard, anyway. Yeah. Because there's a. Uh, what? Yeah, I. I Perhaps that was an error on my part, but what I did was ask for the show of hands of people that wanted to speak on that. I then picked out a load and we couldn't get through them all. Okay. Well, uh, you did that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, so, this, to make it clear, what we're voting on now is motion two, the class struggle platform motion. Can I see all those in favour, please? Can I see? Thank you. Oh, hang on. Can you put your hands up quickly, comrades? All those in favour? I'd like to temporise. Okay, thank you. Can I see all... Hands down, please. Can I see all those against? I think that's lost. Agreed? Okay. Motion four from Southwark on the 21-hour week. Can I see all those in favour, please? All those against? That's defeated. Right, Norwich. The Norwich motion. There was a request and a discussion taking place between Norwich and Brighton about remission there. What was the outcome of that? Okay, thank you. Okay, so we're now voting on motion seven from Norwich on welfare. Can I see all those against? I, I'm, I think that's too close to call. Can I have tell us please? Okay, the result of the vote on motion seven from Norwich is four eight, 85 votes against 62 votes.
So okay. Norwich is carried. So the next one is motion five from Manchester. Manchester on the yeah, this is your Okay, motion five from Manchester as amended by Oxford on zero hours contracts. Comrades, can we just have the one meeting please? Motion five from Manchester as amended by Oxford on zero hours contracts. All those in favour please show. All those against please show. That's overwhelmingly carried. Motion six from Bristol as amended by Barnet on austerity in People's Assembly. All those in favour please show. All those against please show. That's carried. Uh, motion eight from Birmingham on TTIP. All those in favour, please show. All those against, please show. That's carried overwhelmingly. Motion nine from Leicester on Atos. All those in favour, please show. Oh, oh sorry, there's an amendment we need, we need to do first, sorry. To correct that, what I'm asking to vote on now is amendment 9A from Glasgow to motion 9 on Atos from Leicester. Yeah, so all those in favour of amendment 9A, please show. Page 13. Yeah, page 13. Yeah. All those against? That's carried. So we're now voting on the substantive motion 9 as amended by Glasgow. Original motion from Leicester. All those in favour, please show. All those against, please show. That's overwhelmingly carried. Over the page to the motion from Wandsworth. Uh, I think there was a, a request to remit, but you're not doing it, are you? No, no it's not there. So, motion 10 from Wandsworth on destitution. All those in favour, please show. All those against, please show. That's carried overwhelmingly. That reflects the last Which brings that session to a conclusion. <laughs>